G'day everyone, welcome to the How To Halo Magnum Tutorial Part 2. So we're going to jump in right where we left off. We're going to start getting into some detail and really fleshing out this gun and making it look more awesome. Alright, so jumping in where we left off, we're now starting to uh, produce and create all the extra levels that we need. So grab your template and we're going to start trimming out some of this, uh, some of the design. So we're going to cut out the handle section away from the main body. Now, the reason why we're going to do the handle first is because this does involve a few more layers and I prefer to work my way down before I work my way up. The reason being is you can always add levels to the height, but you want to get your depth nailed pretty early on, that way you know and get a general idea of how thick your prop is actually going to be in the end. So once you've cut that out, simply place it back onto your sheet of foam, and then we're going to go and just trace it like any other template we've done before. Grab a blue pen or black pen or whichever color you like, and slowly and very carefully just draw the outline. So now we can go and actually start cutting out the handle a bit further. We're going to get the center piece of the handle, the main grip, and we're going to start uh, templating that onto the foam as well. So then we can really start adding some levels and depth and raise, or give it a raised effect, so that way it's a bit more 3D. So just trace around it once it's about dead center in the middle. And then what we are going to need to do is a little nick or design to assist in uh, producing this little, uh, little handle part. So where I'm drawing this little line now, just mirror that right in between those two uh, designs. Now we're going to add a edge line. Now this edge line dictates where we're going to have the final depth. So as you can see now I'm going around the perimeter of um, the sheet, drawing a little line. It's all the same around. So it all depends on how big your hand is or how uh, how deep you'd like it. I went for about a quarter of an inch, so that way I can now bevel these edges out to that quarter of inch height and start trimming slash shaving away the foam. So like you did in the first one, beveling is cutting in on a 90 degree angle, so straight down, and then you're coming in on a 45-ish degree angle to flick out that little piece of foam, and then you can start running the blade all the way through and start excavating out some of that excess material which we won't need in the end. So as you can see here, I'm starting to flick it all out and it's leaving a nice flat shaved surface underneath which will become the new surface for the depth of the uh, mag magnum's, um, what do you call it, handle. Got there eventually. So that was a bit full on, but you can see now the difference isn't that extreme. All we did was use a bevel technique and then shave technique to uh, lower that level outside of the main grip. So it's something that's not too difficult to achieve. If you need to, watch that little uh, segment again, but you will get a good understanding of how that was created. And it's very uh, important that you know how to do this little technique because you'll use it on any kind of gun or prop going forward because most props like to have those little uh, indentations that add a lot to the uh, overall aesthetic. So now we're even going to go more detailed into the script. On the template you should see these little lines that I'm cutting out now which are more on the inner side. So we're going to cut those and trim those out and then carefully place it back on the grip as you can see here nicely centered and then again trace around it. This is going to be a little section which we're going to now shave on an angle so like we did with the beveling on a 45 degree, instead of beveling in, we're going to bevel out. So we're going to give these little uh, edges a nice little lip, something to have a nice little diagonal uh, point, so that way it gives it a bit more of a 3D design rather than having it on a straight vertical uh, cliff-like appearance. Okay, now onto the top segment. So we're going to create these two little nice little lines here, which will be used as bevel uh, guidelines. So once you've drawn those two, you can start beveling in, cut down on that 90 degree scoring line, and then come back in on the 45 angle, and then just flick the little piece out. As you can see, it's very small, we didn't go too deep in it, we just wanted to get the nice basic little inlet cut done, which will add a nice little depth, making it look like the two pieces are different. So now we're going to create the edge line for the top section. So simply just draw a line about a quarter inch in, and then a quarter inch on top and then we can go ahead and uh, 
do the angled bevel thing on that side as well, just to give it a nice little uh, slope so it doesn't look like that uh, hard edge that I was talking about before. Just a nice little, uh, little lip, just kind of make the design look a bit more aesthetically pleasing. So now we're going to work on the lower section. So simply grab your template and cut it out like I'm doing here, and then place it onto the styrofoam and we'll uh, trace out the section so we know exactly where it will appear on the foam once we remove the template. And then grab the lower section and put it on because there's a little uh, bevel area that we're going to need to cut into to make it look like the top and the bottom are two separate uh, levels. Of course you could actually do it if you wanted to, but this is the nicer and easier way to go about it. So cut in on that 90 degree and then come back in on that 45 and then just flick it out and it looks quite nice. Then go back to your handle with a nice high grit uh, piece of sandpaper and sand it all down. It should make it nice and uh, flat for you, so that way we can uh, have a nice, better looking uh, piece so far, rather than a grungy looking uh, shaved piece of foam. Alright, so now we're going to get into a bit more of a tricky detail. So use this little uh, piece that I've just cut off here to bring in this little outline. And this outline is going to be the part where of course the gun slides, so we're going to draw out the nice little pieces of detail and then bevel it in just very slightly, you're just scoring it just so it uh, gives it a nice little appearance that there is obviously some detail there, but you don't want to carve into the piece of foam. Then once you've done the beveling, you're going to add some edge lines to it, because of course we're wanting to uh, give a little beveled edge to this as well. So just like you did earlier on, create that little uh, edge line about a quarter inch in, and then go ahead and actually just slice it off. Nice and clean, and it gives it a far nicer rounded design. So for a more close up look, you can see it. It does look a lot nicer than it did with the, uh, with the original sheer cliff edge look. So if you can get that sorted, then you're on your way to really knowing how to um, carve styrofoam. Because a lot of these props really like to, or well, a lot of designs in general, like to have a lot of detail. And that is a very easy way to get it across. Okay, so now that you know how to do that, we're going to add some more detail. We'll add it to the lower section of the prop, down near the little laser light. So go ahead and uh, cut out the little segment that I just showed you, and then trace it onto the foam. Then using the bevel technique again, we're going to go in and slowly uh, score it, then cut it in, and we're going to trim out these little sections. Bevel and shave, just like we've been using so far, but on a more of a smaller scale. So carefully just flick out all that detail, all that excess foam that we don't need, and then just go ahead with the blade and carefully shave it out. Remember the blade doesn't really like to use this kind of shaving technique, so be very careful. So now we can start working on the top section of the prop. So go ahead and grab your template and carefully start cutting out the uh, design. And then we can uh, use that to trace the uh, area onto our block of foam, so we kind of know where exactly it's going to be. So using a ruler, just uh, create these edge lines on the front of the prop. Now this is going to be where the muzzle of the gun is, so we need to create this very uh, interesting looking design. So the way I can do it, or the way I did it, is using uh, the edge lines about a quarter inch in, exactly how uh, you can see on screen, and then carefully use the beveled angled edge technique to uh, just slowly trim off the uh, foam to give it that nice rounded look. And then where the uh, bullet will actually come out, we can bring the lines down and we can slowly start to uh, Draw a halfway point and then carve into that to kind of hollow it out. Now this is kind of a difficult part. You want to take it very carefully, just slowly cutting into the foam as best as possible along the lines. Once you've scored it, you can then grab the top section and just cut it right out. Because of course we're going to now need to uh, hollow it out to give it the bullet track look. To make it look like uh, bullets can actually come out of the actual object. But we'll, uh, we'll check that out in the episode 3, where we go into the more hardcore detail about doing that. So I hope that wasn't too much information for you guys. We did cover a lot of uh, individual details, and we did speed through it somewhat pretty fast, only because there's a lot of information to get across to you guys. So you will have to go back in your own time, re-watch the video, and try and understand it when you're doing or going along with it. But now, if you're ready, click on part 3. We'll jump straight in and we'll get this gun finished. We'll add those final levels and the layers we need to make it look nice and bulky and epic like the Halo Magnum always has been throughout the games. So jump on board, click it, and we'll get started. Or if you need to go back to the first one, 
do so here if you need to touch base or learn a few of the techniques that we covered in the first one. So I'll leave it with you guys. Yeah, any there. I'm not standing here forever. We can we can continue this. It's just a mouse click away. Whatever.